this is Nate from FuseLine and today I'm going to be showing you how to modify the WiseCam V3 to add the ability to adjust the focal length of the lens and allow you to use this camera to get crisp and clear close-up video. Now you might be wondering why someone would want to do this. Well, in my case, I'm using these cameras to monitor 3D printers and the cameras come stock with a fixed focal length that is set for capturing security footage of things that are relatively far away. So, if you try to use it out of the box for taking close-up video, you're going to see you'll have a very blurry image. This modification is great for anyone who wants to use the WiseCam V3 for close-up video. Some other examples beyond monitoring 3D printers might be to monitor your fish tank, monitor a bird feeder, or anything else where the camera is placed between 1 and 3 feet away from the thing that you're taking a video of. And before we start, just a warning that this mod requires disassembling the camera, which will definitely void your warranty. And we're also going to be removing a lot of the waterproofing glue and seals, so it's best if you're planning on using this indoors or in an area that's protected from the environment. And finally, this is a pretty simple modification and should only take around 20-30 minutes to complete. Alright, so we're going to need a few tools here, and first things first, you're going to want some safety glasses, since we're going to need to pry this thing apart. Uh, you're also going to want some pliers, a mini screwdriver set, particularly both a Phillips and a flathead screwdriver, and also a utility knife. We have two main goals here, and the first is to remove this rubber gasket that surrounds the lens so that we can replace it with a focus ring, which I'll explain later. And the second is to remove the glue that's holding the lens at the fixed focal length. The first step is to remove this plastic cover so that we can access the screws that hold the camera to the casing. And to do this, grab your utility knife and work the blade under the plastic cover. It's only held on by glue and once you get under the cover, just work the blade around the perimeter until the cover is easy to remove and you can just pull it off with your fingers. Next, we need to remove three screws that hold the camera to the casing. You'll find small rubber seals that are pressed into the screw holes, so grab a small screwdriver and work them out. That will give us access to the screws, which we will use our Phillips head screwdriver to remove. They're pretty small, so make sure you don't drop them on the floor since they're quite easy to lose. Next, we need to pry the camera from the casing. This takes some force, so be careful not to cut yourself or cause too much damage to the casing. Work your blade under the camera faceplate and pry it outward until you feel it release. Then, gently pull it out since there are two cables connecting it to the case that need to be disconnected. Be very careful here, as the cables are very small and easy to damage. Once you have the camera separated from the casing, we need to remove the lens from the faceplate to remove this gasket. To do this, simply remove the two outer screws on the back of the circuit board. Do not remove the inner screws, as these hold the lens to the image sensor. Once the screws are removed, gently separate the lens from the faceplate. Again, be careful as there are some more small cables here that hold the two pieces together. These don't need to be disconnected. Grab a small flathead screwdriver and work the rubber gasket out of the faceplate. Once you get it loose, just pull it with your fingers. We don't need that anymore, so you can just toss it. Looking closer at the lens, you'll see that there are two dabs of glue fixing the lens in place. We need to break the lens free and remove that glue. To do that, grab a pair of pliers, grab the lens, and twist it free. Again, this does take some force, and if you need to, you can use a heat gun or blow dryer to soften the glue a bit. Once loose, unscrew it all the way with your fingers. Be careful not to smudge the back of the lens or drop anything into the hole for the camera sensor. Once you have the lens free, grab whatever tool you have on hand to remove as much glue as possible. If you're going to use a wire snip, just be very careful not to damage the threads as they are very fine and can easily be damaged. You won't be able to get all of the glue, but that's totally fine. We're just trying to get as much as possible so that we can freely adjust the focal length of the lens later on. You're also going to want to check the threads on the image sensor to make sure that there's no glue left there. In my case, it looks pretty good. Next, screw the lens back on. I recommend screwing it all the way down until it feels tight and then work it back and forth a bit to break up any remaining glue in the threads. This will allow for a smoother adjustments of the focal length later on. Alright, well if you made it this far, the hard parts are done and now we just need to reassemble and we're good to go. Put the two circuit boards back together and reassemble with the two screws. You're going to want to make sure that these are tightened all the way down so that the lens is held securely in place. 
These are self-threading screws, so it might take a good amount of force. Once reassembled, you can see that there is a gap between the lens and the faceplate. This is exactly what we want so that we can install the focus ring later on. Next, reattach the cables to the circuit board. Again, be very careful here since these are pretty small cables and can easily be damaged. Insert the camera back into the casing and give it a firm press to seat it in place. Next, replace the three screws. Make sure that these are nice and tight, but be careful not to strip them. You can then reinstall the rubber seals if you'd like by just pressing them back into the holes. Finally, press the white faceplate back into position and the residual glue will hold it in place nicely. You could add more glue if you'd like. And that's it. The last step is to simply press on the focus ring. I designed and printed this out of TPU, which is a flexible material. It simply press fits around the lens and allows you to easily adjust the lens focus while using the camera so that you can easily dial it in on whatever object that you're recording. If you need one of these focus rings, we do sell them on our Etsy shop and the link is provided in the description below. So, how does it work? Well, here are two videos. The video on the left was taken with the stock focal length and the video on the right was taken after adjusting the focal length to bring the center of my print bed into focus. You can see that the parts being printed in the video on the left are blurry, while the parts in the video on the right are in focus. This demonstrates how the stock setup is designed for far away video, and by making this modification, you're going to get much higher quality video when recording up close. That's all I have for you today, and if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below.